So what's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Thanks to the Curse of Osiris expansion, we've been rewarded with tons of new gear including many great legendary and exotic guns and armor. A lot of the new gear has been very fun to try out and functions pretty well and with the release of a ton of new gear, I figured I could go over 5 of the best legendary weapons that have been added to Destiny 2 thanks to our latest DLC. But before I get into the video, I just want to mention that the weapons I showcase aren't the ones that you can get from the Prestige Raid Lair because of the fact that the Prestige version of it has not been released as of the recording of this video. Also, I will not be including any of the Forge weapons, so this is strictly vendor gear. This is week two, so not all the weapons have been released to the public, so we can't really include those in the batch. But from what we know, the Forged Shotgun, the Perfect Paradox, which I made a guide on, is the best shotgun in the game for PvE by a long shot. But back to the Prestige gear, I'm pretty much positive that the Prestige gear is going to end up being the best gear in Destiny 2 so far, as Bungie direly needs to make up for the pathetic rewards from the original Leviathan, and they've said on their blog multiple times that they are going to provide better incentives for doing the Prestige version of the Raid Lair. But with that said, let's get straight into the video, starting with number 5. Kicking things off with number 5, we've got Zenith of Your Kind. Now, I know I said we're not going to be doing any of the Prestige rewards for the Raid Lair, but that doesn't mean we're not going to be doing the regular version versions of the Raid Lair, which include two weapons being I'm Alive and Zenith of Your Kind. I'm Alive is a grenade launcher and Zenith of Your Kind is the shotgun that you get from the Raid Lair. As for the first weapon, this one just barely makes it on this list as it comes just short of being better than Summerled D, putting Summerled D right after Hawthorne's field shotgun and a sudden death for the PvP and PvE top tiers respectively. And so if you stack it against Hawthorne, it wins because of the auto. Stack it up against sudden death, it's got it bested in PvP. So stack it against the Summerled D, well then it's a trade of other stats being better for impact. Speaking about its stats, let me go over them and the shotgun's perks more in detail. So the shotgun can hold 7 bullets per mag and you can shoot up to 100 rounds per minute. As I mentioned previously, this is full auto, which is why it can shoot so many rounds so quickly, and that's thanks to its rapid fire frame, which also allows you to reload much quicker when your mag is empty. As for the barrel, you get an option between corkscrew rifling, barrel shroud, or rifle barrel, which all slightly alter the gun's stability range and handling speed. As for the next two perks you can choose from, it's got Pulse Monitor, which auto-reloads part of your mag whenever you're critically wounded, and it's got Auto-Loading Holster that allows your weapon to be reloaded automatically when you holster it for a short period of time. Lastly, it's got Threat Detector, which gives a slight boost to the shotgun when enemies are around increasing reload stability and handling. Zenith of Your Kind has some decent perks, and while it doesn't perform quite as well as some of the other weapons on this list, it's still one that I thought I should mention in the video. In at number 4, we've got Nature of the Beast. So yes, comparing this shotgun to all of the other vendor weapons that are pretty much all Suros, which is not including the forged weapons and not including the prestige raid weapons, this is the original raid shotgun. I think that this is the fifth best weapon. This is actually a legendary hand cannon, and the firing rate with this pistol is at 180, making it one of the fastest hand cannons in the game. But unfortunately, it's got a slow reloading speed and only 10 bullets per mag to counteract that. Its perks include precision frame, which gives the weapon high accuracy, an option between a crossfire and steady hand sight, an option between appended mag, which increases mag size and accurized rounds that increase range. And lastly, it's got dragonfly, which creates an elemental damage explosion for precision kills. I would recommend definitely stacking stacking on those accurized rounds as getting as much range as you can for hand cannons is crucial and dragonfly is quite special as well because while getting precision kills may not be too common if you've got the accuracy you can make those a priority and try to almost always get that explosion effect to put out even more damage making this hand cannon an even deadlier beast unfortunately dragonfly isn't too powerful so you would find more use of it in pve rather than pvp but nevertheless it's still a great perk to have this is arguably one of the best hand cannons or at least one of the best legendary hand cannons in the game, so I figured it would definitely be fit to have a spot on this list. If you wanted to stack it up against, say, Better Devils, then it really can't compete in the same way because Better Devils just dishes out damage at a much faster rate, and it's generally useful in more scenarios because you don't get the drop off because of its one special perk. But I would say that this hand cannon is definitely among the top five legendary hand cannons in the game. As for the Forge hand cannon, well, we don't know yet. And coming in at number three, we've got Autumn Wind. As for the next weapon, we've got a pulse rifle known as Autumn Wind, which brings back memories of pulse rifles back in Death 
Destiny 1. This rifle can put out 540 rounds per minute with an impact of 23 and a really good mag size with it being 37 per mag. Having that much ammo makes it easy for you to get two kills in PvP without even having to reload, maybe even three if lucky. Its perks include rapid fire frame, which gives you a faster reload whenever your magazine is empty, an option between hit mark, red dot micro, and rifle scope sights, an option between accurized rounds, which increases range and tactical mag, which stability and mag size sacrificing for a longer reload speed. And lastly, it's got under pressure that improves stability and accuracy as your mag gets lower. This weapon has decent damage, range, and a firing rate, which allows you to be viable in both PvP and PvE. Overall, this is a solid pulse rifle and can be very effective at medium range, so that's why I put this on the number three spot. And in a number two, we've got positive outlook. Now, as for the next weapon, we've got an auto rifle that looks awfully similar to another legendary Destiny 2 auto rifle, and that's Uriel's Gift. This gun has a firing rate of 450 rounds per minute, a very decent range, a mag size of 33 bullets, and an all right impact rate as well. As for its perks, it's got a precision frame, an option between jolt, flash, and transmission sights, an option between accurized rounds that increases range and armor piercing rounds that also increases range but also extra damage to enemy shields. And lastly, it's got kill clip, which allows you to deal more damage when you reload after kill. This is a great perk as you tend to reload after kills anyway, so you have enough rounds for your next gunfight, but for you to have increased damage for that said next fight is even better. You can easily acquire this just from the campaign, so if you're looking to get this, go ahead and play some of those missions, and you should have it in your hands soon. Overall, this gun is incredibly good and is basically Uriel's replica and even better in some cases, but it falls short on its perks, which is why I had to put this on the number two spot. Uriel's Gift still wins in a gunfight, but as I said with the hand cannon, this is definitely top five material. Now, before we get into the number one spot, I want to mention a few honorable mentions that were also quite decent weapons, but just not good enough in terms of stats or perks or lack of viability in certain situations. So the first one is going to be the Atlanta D SMG, which has an insanely fast firing rate of 600 rounds per minute with a decent impact and mag size, with it being a 27 bullet per mag weapon. I wanted to include this as an honorable mention as SMGs are very situational. And while this weapon may not be that great in PvE, it can serve pretty well in PvP. Due to it not being great in both modes, as opposed to the rest of the weapons on this list being good in both, I had to put this only as an honorable mention. Secondly, I want to showcase the Classical 42 since it's the best Curse of Osiris vendor rock. And while this is a decent weapon, it's basically just another Suros copy and paste and should sit on a shelf since it's the spitting image of the epitome of carbon copies being a problem in Destiny 2, and it just cannot compare to Sins, Blue, or even Curtain Call. Now as for the last honorable mention, I want to talk about the E14. I actually wanted to put this on the list over the SMG since it has a very unique perk to it, and that's Grave Robber that can be very practical at close range. Melee kills allow the gun to reload a portion of the mag, and people who like being a macho pistol guy with the last hope or dance where you just want to go, you know, commando and pull out your pistol and just turn corners and take people out, you may want to consider this instead. And in at number one, last but not least, we have Metronome 52. Lastly on this list, we have an awesome legendary scout rifle. It's got a fairly high impact, 16 mag size, and a firing rate of 180 rounds per minute. It unfortunately is a bit slow when it comes to reloading, but so are a lot of other scout rifles. Its perks include a precision frame, an option between Slow 21, SPO 28, and SRO 52 sight, an option between flared magwell, which increases stability and reloads speed greatly, and appended mag, which increases mag size. And lastly, it's got full auto trigger system, which allows the scout rifle to be a full auto just by holding down the trigger system. Now, scout rifles deal enough damage per shot for you to not worry about a faster firing rate, but for it to have full auto guaranteeing the fastest shots possible is really useful and can make a big difference in life and death situations, especially in PvP. This scout rifle kind of reminds me of the Mita, and while it's not quite as powerful as it is, it's still a very viable weapon in Destiny 2, and this weapon shines in not just PvE, but PvP as well, which is why I had to put this on the number one spot. Unfortunately, as is the outcome of pretty much all of the Curse of Osiris vendor weapons, this thing is just not going to compare to Nameless Midnight or the Midas, so unfortunately, I will have to again say that despite the fact that these are still all top 5 material, pretty much all of the weapons on this list are not top 2 material, which is the unfortunate reality of it, but you can still fuse them into your weapons for the extra power. Are they worth going for? Not really. 
are they worth using until you get up to a high enough level to be able to get the better weapons? Like, for example, you might want to save your mind a multi-tool quest until you're 335, or you could even fuse the weapon into it. But regardless of the scenario, I'm really hoping that some of the Forge weapons come out better than the best ones that we have currently. Because as it stands, the only one really worth going for seems to be the shotgun. But once the other weapons are revealed, maybe I'll do another list on those. Or if they're really not that worthy of even doing that, and they're just, you know, top five candidates but not really pushing the boundaries then i won't be making a video on the forge weapons but like i said we don't even have all of the tablets out at the moment so there is your full conclusive critical yet as accurate as i could possibly be analyzation and determination of the best legendary weapons in curse of osiris not including the prestige raid